Hello everyone, it's Sky here and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new. We're very happy to have you here. Today we are going to be continuing part two of our September color along. If you guys haven't watched part one, I highly recommend going to do so. But yeah, we are just going to continue right on in. We've been working on, we've been working in Hannah Lynn's Mythical Maidens and Curious Creatures. Um, the artist book and page was voted on by our channel members, um, Cloud and Up. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking the page they picked so far. Um, I was a little bit unsure color wise when we first started, but I think I've figured some colors out. So we're coloring Willow Dryad and this is what I've gotten so far. I really like this so far. I do wish I'd have went a little bit lighter on the green. I'm not too sure about that, but I think it'll tie in eventually. And I was very torn on the color of the trees, her hair, and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm happy to say I've got the trees figured out and it was literally one thing that um, kind of helped me choose. So I was kind of torn between brown and gray and then whether or not to have it kind of fading into skin tone or keeping her skin tone the same as the tree color. And I decided I do want to keep her skin tone the same as the tree color. And I don't want to do brown. And my reason for that is I want to add a little bit of blush to her cheeks and then maybe do her lips pink. We'll kind of play that by ear and see. But I do want to have some pink accents on this page. Um, and I think the gray would go really nicely with that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That might make it change whether her hair color will be pink, but I'm, I'm not too sure what I want to do with that yet. I think once we have um, the trees colored, then I can kind of go in on Photoshop and play around with her hair and kind of see what I want to do. I don't know if I will do streaks in it or just do it all pink, but um, it'll give me more of a general idea on which way to go color wise for that. So we're going to color the clouds. Um, we're going to color these trees and then we'll see about coloring her. She's quite a big piece on the page. So we'll see. We'll see where we get. But yeah, um, that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, as always, I have a couple pieces of paper in behind this page to protect the pages behind this one. I have a little bit of booze here. I'm drinking some Jack Daniels uh, watermelon punch. Super good. Gotta drink that one with lots of ice though. It's a little bit, it's not so much strong, but it's very sweet. So the ice definitely helps kick the sweetness. Um, let's start in with the, um, I think with the clouds. Um, so one thing I was kind of thinking of the clouds I kind of want to be kind of like yellow and gray and white. I want them to kind of blend in a little bit with the background while still standing out. So I also don't want them to blend into the trees. So I decided I'm going to use the French gray for the trees. So it's a little bit more of like a brownish gray. So it's actually kind of in between the brown and gray that I was thinking about. And I never use the French gray. So I think that that would work out very well. Let's start maybe with... Yeah, we'll start with the clouds. I'm going to grab my ja oh yeah, my jasmine. I can get those colors out just one more here. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the clouds. So that's why I'm gonna start with the jasmine because it's a little bit lighter. So I do know that I want a highlight underneath, even though that's gonna be like our darkest area. That's where our shadow is gonna be. So I'm gonna try and leave a little sliver of white on the bottom of each cloud. So let me start like right around here. And we can just add some color in here. So I'm leaving kind of, this color probably doesn't really show up very well on camera, I'd imagine. I'm leaving kind of like a harsher line at the bottom. 
So there's a harsh line going into the white at the bottom of the cloud. And then I'm fading this upwards into the top of the cloud where we kind of want it a little bit more white. Okay, this is looking good already. Phone just made a weird noise. I'm just gonna make sure. Yeah, it's still recording. We're good. We're good. I don't know if I would want to go any any darker than the jasmine. So I don't think I'm gonna use the sunburst yellow for now. So I'm just gonna hide that swatch. Let's come in with the. Ooh, I grabbed quite a dark, cool gray. The 50%. I don't know if I want to go that dark. Maybe keep that one out for now, too. Let's start with a 30%. I feel like that's probably dark enough. I'm just going to give this a good sharpen because I want to really be able to control where this color is going. This is maybe blend a little bit of this in with the jasmine. I don't know if I want to blend through all of the yellow, but I do want to add kind of like a grayish hue to a good portion of it, I think. I'm going very, very lightly. We can always build this up if we need to, but I want to start very soft. I actually really like the jasmine and this color together. They look really nice. I'm gonna make this one a little bit darker, kind of closer to the bottom here. Okay, I like this, but I want to go a little bit darker, I think. So I'm just going to, instead of going with a darker color, I'm just going to build up the layers here. Because I like this color. I don't want to go any tone darker than this color, but what I want a darker version of this tone, if that makes sense. So maybe kind of darken up the gray coming out from behind the tree. And then it still kind of like fades into that yellow, which is really pretty. I'm going to extend the gray just a little bit here, just coming past the strand of hair into the yellow. And then these clouds I already went a little bit darker on, so I think I'm going to leave those. Let's maybe actually darken up this little tiny cloud here, mostly along the 
bottom. Just because that's pretty small, so it's, it's hardly noticeable. Let's go back in with our jasmine. And we're just going to go back over a little bit of this and bring it out. Okay, I like that. Let's go in with the 10% cool gray. So we're just going to kind of fade this out a little ways from the yellow. And I thought I was going to use white, but I don't think I am. I'm going to get rid of that one and I'm going to get rid of the cream because I don't think we'll need either. I think I'm happy with the cool gray. I'm just gonna kind of lightly bring this over the whole cloud, I think. We'll outline them in white, so that'll that's where we'll get our white from. But I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not like fully burnishing either. I'm just lightly going over everything. I kind of want that like soft puffy look for the clouds. So having that little bit of white show through is actually going to be beneficial to us. It's not going to be as noticeable because it's a light color. So for example, if we were coloring this cloud black, you would very easily be able to see every single little white dot showing through. But since it's a fairly light color, the white is not as noticeable, so it actually kind of helps us achieve a little bit of a different look. And then also we can add more color if we want to, which I think I do with this cloud here. I'm going to bring the 30% up just a little bit more. Kind of around the top of this cloud. I'm going to actually deepen up some of these little lines that I have here, these white lines. So you can kind of see it's a little bit more noticeable that it's lighter here. And I actually really like the look that that's giving. So I think I'm going to do that on all of the clouds and then just fade the gray up a little bit. And 
yeah, that adds actually so much, so much depth to the clouds, just that little tiny, little tiny accent makes them look way more 3D, which looks good. Okay, I think that's good for the clouds. And then obviously we should still be in frame for the trees, which is what we're going to tackle next. And then the nice thing is once we get these trees done, we can kind of do some of the accents. So we don't really have to worry about running our hand over them or anything. So let's set these colors aside. I'm going to grab my French grays here. I don't know what all colors I'm going to use. I'm just going to make sure these are in order so I don't accidentally pick up the wrong one. So let's see, 90, 70, 50, 30, 20, 20. There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to break my rule and I'm just going to start with the dark color. <laughs> Is this going to end up good or very bad? We'll see. I'm going to sharpen that. I'm going to take a sip of my drink. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to create a shadow underneath this branch here. So kind of coming down to about here. And then I'm going to switch it so the shadow continues kind of on this side. Add a little bit of shadow in behind these leaves as well. And then maybe just a slight shadow on the left of this one too. Oops, I ended up a little bit bigger than I was going for, but oh well, it looks good. I really like this color actually. So I'm going to kind of take inspiration from Amy Gifford's picture here. I don't know if it's Gifford or Gifford, but I think it's Gifford. Um, so I really like the way that she kind of used some of these kind of like ripples in the trees and their bark to kind of show like lighter aspects and darker aspects. So I'm going to kind of use that as a guide. So we're going to put a little bit of a shadow in underneath here. I want the top of this tree to be quite shadowed. We'll kind of fade this out here. I don't know if we want to like add a shadow underneath every single one of these lines. I feel like this one's pretty small. Let's do a shadow kind of above this line maybe. So above this one.
Okay, I'm liking the looks of this. Add a little bit more shadow kind of like around the edges here too I think along the whole thing so I'm basically just gonna make a shadow going along the border here it might darken some of the spots up quite a bit but I think it'll kind of help frame the picture and let's do the same at the top here Yeah, that looks good. I think that's probably supposed to be leaf. That's okay. We'll just create a little bit of a shadow here and we can make it part of the bark. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out where the tree comes down to. This is definitely still part of the tree here. This might be bush. But I don't know. Bush. I think the tree actually comes down into here. So this looks like part of the tree. So it's maybe... A little bit on this. This would be part of the tree then. We're gonna work our way up here. This hair kind of wisping off. This is tree here. I think this is tree here. Got a little bit of a shadow under, under the mushroom anyways though. And then I think this would be bush because we don't really have that pattern kind of coming through here. So I think our bush kind of comes around this way roughly. And then there's bush in behind here too. I think that that way makes the most sense. So I had a little bit of a shadow in behind the bush as well too, I think. I have to keep reminding myself that this is hair. Okay, let's focus on one tree so we can kind of figure this out. So now it is quite a bit dark. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna skip the French gray. I think I might actually, hmm, well, let's use the 50% gray as another shadow color maybe. Um, so let's kind of use that as a shadow for here. So just on the bottom of these, let's maybe add this in. The bottom of these lighter ones. That way they don't look like nothing. We want to give these some texture too. 
Um, add a little bit up here. So it's not going to be a whole lot of this color, but I don't know if I really want to put it down at the bottom of these. Let's maybe actually leave those ones alone. We'll keep it on this one because I already did it, but. A little bit here. Let's put just a little bit kind of running along the edge of this, maybe. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so from there we can go in with our 30%. And that one I think, let's maybe drag out from our 90%. Uh, We'll kind of use these in our darker areas. I'm still kind of fading out and leaving a little bit of a highlight. I don't know if I want to use the um, the 20 or the 10, but we'll figure that out. Oh, these meld so nice together. I'm very glad that I decided to go with this color. I don't use these pencils enough. I, I generally stay away from the French gray because they're quite a bit different, but when you use them together, they look so good. Okay, I really like this. I think we're gonna do probably the 10%, um, just to go over the highlights for these more shadowy bits. And then for these lighter ones, I actually might do a little bit of both, but we'll see. We don't have a lot of room to play around with, unfortunately, but I think it's still look good. I really like the, um, the light kind of like almost foggy look that this is giving. Sharpen that up a little bit here. Oh, I am obsessed with this color. And it's like the perfect compromise between the gray and brown that I was deciding on. Or torn between, I guess. I'm so happy with this. 
Um, all right, let's come in with our 20%. So I think with this one, we're going to bring it up a little bit from the 30% and we're just gonna fade it out. We're gonna leave a little bit of a highlight at the tops. We want these bits to be quite a bit lighter. I'm really liking the um, kind of striking difference between the layers, I guess, of this tree. I think down in this area, I'm just gonna go ahead and color the rest of this trunk in. Yeah, I think I like that. So the rest will color in with the 10% French gray. So I'm only gonna put this in over top of the areas that haven't really been colored yet. So I'm not gonna go over everything with this. I wanna keep my shadows a little bit deeper. If I went over them with this, that would kind of bring them out a little bit or lighten them up, I guess. And I don't want that. I think these might be my favorite trees that Hannah has ever done. I'm a little bit worried about her fingers kind of blending into the trees, but I don't think there's really much we can do to stop that, unfortunately. We can make them a little bit lighter, which I think is what I'm going to do. Although generally, usually things that are up close are actually darker and then things that appear further away are usually a little bit lighter, but... Oh, I mean, I could go darker. I think it'd blend too much if we went too dark, though. Let's go lighter. We'll play, play on the safe side. Um, so we'll use the 50% cool gray, or sorry, French gray. Um, and just create some shadows here. We don't really have a lot of room to work with on this one, so I'm just going to add little shadows here and there. But for the most part, this is going to be um, very, very light. Let's just work on this small part here and then we'll move on to the rest. 
I'm going to skip the 30% and I'm going to go straight in with the 20. Just add a little bit of this in here. I think mostly coming out from the 30. We'll add this in. And last but not least, the 10. I think that looks okay. I do think I'm going to add a little bit of the 90% here, just on a few select areas. So a little bit up here, a little bit kind of coming here, coming out from behind this one. I think we need some there. And then I'm just going to outline this again. And this one. And there we go. I think that's a little better. So maybe add like a little touch of it just kind of in this corner here there and then it looks like it actually has a little bit of interest to it um so now that we've got that let's go ahead and kind of work on these areas i think because i don't really want to go too far down here i want to work more on these trees maybe we should actually no i want to color them we'll figure out a stopping point let's just go for it so I'm going to shadow this entire branch that's popping out from behind this one. So I'm add a little bit of shadow to that. Let's maybe add some shadow on the right side of this line coming down here. Just shadowing the bottoms of each of these lines. So we're basically trying to do the same thing as over on that tree. We are a little bit more limited with space, so we're just basically trying to do it on a smaller scale, which is a little bit tricky, but not altogether impossible.
so many branches. <laughs> just a cluster of them and I don't really know what is what but I'm just kind of winging it at this point okay we do want this one a little bit shadowed in behind here same with this one here so we'll do that this one we want it shadowed underneath here Let's shadow the top of that one as well we'll just completely put it behind this one and then this one is behind this one so we'll shadow that and then we end up with just one big shadow, <laughs> pretty much. I'm gonna shadow the tops of these just because we did with the uh, tree over here, so why not? Okay, I think that's good for shadow. Definitely don't want to overdo it. So then we're going to kind of mimic the same thing we did on the other one. I don't think we really put, we didn't put too much dark gray or French gray in. We only put a little bit, mostly on these lighter bits, just to give them a little bit of a, a shadow. Let's try and do that. Basically, we're just going to throw this in randomly and hope for the best because too many little tiny bits. It's hard to keep track of what is what. I'm just going to throw this in some random places. Maybe a little bit on the tops of those. I'm going to go back in with my 90% just for a second. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. We can technically bring it down to about here before we'd have to worry. So this is a good stopping point, actually. This is perfect. Okay, hopefully that's good. Don't want to go super dark. So let's go in with the 30%, which is, that's 50. I put them all out of order again. And the barrels don't exactly go from lightest to darkest. They're a bit strange. Okay, so I think we focused this mostly on where the darker areas are going to be. So let's do that here as well. We want a fair bit of this color. We used quite a bit of it on the other tree. So I think for the most part, a good rule of thumb for that is I'm pretty sure we used the 30% almost everywhere that we used the 70%. So we're gonna do that. We're just gonna try to not bring it out as far as the only thing. So that's the tricky part.
Okay, not bad. It's still fairly light, so we can add a little bit more of this in some areas where we want it a little bit darker. Not too many areas, to be honest, though. <laughs> it's not very many areas that I actually want darker. Okay, I think that looks good. So let's move in with the 20, which I think we just put on some of these top bits here. It's not really a whole bunch of room, so I'm not gonna add too much of this. I don't think we really need it. I think this is looking pretty good without adding a whole lot. So let's maybe put a little bit there, a little bit here, and then I think the rest we can probably color in with the 10%, and I think we'll be okay. So I'm just gonna sharpen that. And then same as before, I'm just adding the 10% into anywhere that hasn't been fully colored. I think that should be all of it. That looks so cool. It's a little bit more trippy, for lack of a better word, on her arms because there's so much more detail in such a smaller space, but it looks really cool. I like that. And we can lighten or darken it up depending on if we wanted to outline some of the branches, but I think I personally would probably leave them. We'll see, it's still early. All right, let's work on, I could probably do these trees together now that we kind of know what we're doing. So going in with the 90%, let's start adding in our shadows. So I want it to be fairly dark up here coming out from under this tree branch. Um, do this is like a lighter line here. You want to add in some shadows. Thank you. 
Mm. Okay, so this is kind of a weird one here because I mean, this looks like it could be one of those lighter spots, but at the same time, it doesn't kind of wrap all the way around. So I am going to color underneath this part. I'm going to do it as a shadow. And then, I don't know, let's kind of just bring this up and create a line here like this, maybe. I think that'd look pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so for this one up here, again, we're going to make this pretty dark coming out of here. We're going to go all the way down, creating a shadow on this side. Oh, apologies if you can hear my tummy grumbling. Apparently I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's go underneath this one. Let's go underneath this one as well. Why not? Let's extend that line all the way down. This one right here for sure is going to be one of those lighter bits. I don't really know what to do with this spot. I think I'm actually going to create a shadow on the inside. Make this a little bit different. It's going to be fairly dark there. I think that looks pretty cool, actually. So a little bit of a shadow just above these leaves here. So top of this one. Okay, I think that's going to be bush as well, but let me just double check with my reference here. Yes. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of trunk kind of peeking out from here. Oh no, that's mushroom. Oops. Oops. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's go in with our 50%. Um, and yeah, again, this, I think I'm just gonna kind of focus as a little bit of a shadow on some of these lighter areas. Just kind of running along the bottoms of them. Just a little bit on this one. Okay. 
think that's good. 30%, so this is the one that we're using a fair bit of. And we're mostly bringing this in with the 90% and bringing it out from that. I think this entire area kind of like back in here, I'm just going to go ahead and color this in. Just add a little bit more of this. Okay, I think that looks good. Okay, so next is the 20%, and I believe this one we just kind of added and brought up from the 30% that we put on these lighter bits. So I'm going to add a little bit of the 20% kind of coming out on this branch here. All right, and again, last but not least, going with 10%, and this is just going to be on the areas that we haven't colored in yet. So we're blending in with the lighter colors, but we don't overly want to go over the darker colors too much. If at all. These might very well be my favorite trees that Hannah has ever drawn.
A lot of like bark styles and textures in trees can be very confusing to color, but this is actually um, fairly straightforward and it adds a lot of extra interest. I think almost everybody colored the trees in this way, but I'm just using Amy's reference because hers is very clear and actually very similar to mine. I did do mine quite a bit different, but I do really like the looks of them. Ah, amazing. What are we at for time? Oh my goodness, we're only at an hour. That's incredible. Okay, so I think this is going to take us more than half an hour, unfortunately, as much as I am like itching to color her. Um, I think what we're going to do, um, we could do final touches, but I kind of want to do... Ah, I'm so torn. Mm. I kind of want to do these vines kind of wrapping around her, but my problem is I don't know how many different like tones of greens I want, so like count this as like one tone. I'm thinking about using this tone to kind of wrap around her. Um, and then maybe like at the bottom here, we have this like bush in the bottom left corner, but then there's also like all of this kind of grass or like bush underneath her. And then there's also this bush in the back. So I'm a little bit torn on how to color this. Okay, let's keep this a little bit more straightforward and we will still keep coloring some of her, but I think what we'll do is we'll focus on the roots because that'll make it so we have less to color in the next part and then that gets us one step closer. I don't have to overthink colors right now. Uh, what time am I looking at? Ah, oh, it's only 4.30. That's good. Okay, so let's start in with our 90% and we will go in with that. So I'm going to color in behind this um, root here to put send this one kind of behind it. So we're going to create our shadow there. Do a little bit of a shadow. I'm kind of going along the bottom, I think, too. kind of connect these to each other so this will be the the last bit we'll do on this trunk here we'll focus on this spot here and if we have time then we can work on a little bit more um, so we'll just kind of work on this in sections until we're at that hour and a half mark because like I was saying last time I don't always know how long everything's going to take and actually I should rephrase that I never know <laughs> how long things are going to take I always like to try and guess and I'm usually always wrong so I want to use up the hour and a half intervals as much as we can in the beginning and then in the last part if we don't need as much time then that's awesome but I would rather have each part an hour and a half than kind of cut some parts short and then have like a two and a half hour part or like have to do like a, a sixth part at like half an hour or something silly like that. 
Okay, let's uh, we'll do this part as maybe maybe the lighter part. I do want to add a little bit of a shadow though still, so kind of running along the bottom of this trunk here and behind here. So create that shadow here and kind of fade that out. A little bit of shadow here. And then we'll bring a shadow down along with this one as well. I don't know if you guys can hear Miss Lilo catching some Z's, but she sounds so cute right now. She's not quite snoring, but she's breathing very, very heavily, very deep sleep. Let's actually bring this right up to the leaf here. Why not? It just seems weird to kind of just leave it here. So create a little bit of shadow underneath here. Shadow coming up from here. don't really know what I want to do in this area. So I kind of want to do, let's do this top bit in shadow here. Okay, so let's do, I guess this in shadow too. I think that looks good. I think I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's go in with our 50% then. Um, and again, we'll just add that along the bottoms of these. I don't think I'm going to put it on that one.
So that looks good. Let's go in with our 30. Let's see where we're at for time now. Okay, perfect. I think we'll be able to do a little bit of final touches on the top part of the page. And we'll be able to call it a part after this. Okay, so 30%. So again, this is going to go mostly where 90% went. Trying to leave highlights on these branches is a pain in the butt. If we can't get a highlight, it's not a big deal. But it's nice to do it if we can. Um, okay, so this one, 20% just comes off from the 30% or 50%. We didn't use 30, do we? What do we do? But yeah, this comes off the 50%. We were just using it. <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> it was a long day. It was good. Boring, actually, which is kind of nice sometimes. Uh, the shift still seemed to went by, to go by really fast, which is always nice when that happens, especially if it's boring. All right, and then let's finish this up with the 10%.
right. mostly touch up just the leaves and the clouds so I think the leaves I'm actually gonna go through and outline every single one just because this is like a little bit darker than I was anticipating the leaves to be actually so I do just want to do this quickly Normally I would leave this kind of thing for the end, but I'm pretty confident on that because it already makes it look quite a bit better in my opinion, so. A scrap piece of paper here, if I have one. Very pretty. I'm going to add some dots to these as well, I think. Yes. I try not to go too highlight crazy on um, some pages, but pages that are like technically magical, like this one, because this is obviously like a magical creature, it just, it needs it. Look at the difference even between just the outline and those few little dots. It's wild how much just some small little accents can really change how something looks. I'm putting dots on almost all of the leaves. I'm putting um, mostly small dots and then just kind of picking a couple that have like bigger dots to be a little bit more noticeable just so it doesn't end up looking like too much. Wow. Yeah, those those extra little details can really, really make a page. I like this so much better.
just gotta clean it off every once in a while when you notice that the the opacity of the white is kind of disappearing it's good to give it a shake clean it off and push the nozzle down a little bit to get the paint flowing again We're going to white out the outline of these clouds as well. It's going to take a little bit longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. It is worth it. Now, normally I won't go through and outline things in white if I still need to color things beside them, but if I go over the white outline too much and feel like I need to add it, I can just add it back in on those certain places rather than wait and do all of this later. I'm okay with that. I think it'll be okay.
There we go. Oh, my wrist is killing me now, but so worth it. Look how pretty that is. I was actually just thinking to myself that she would look really good with like very light, almost white hair, as if it was like kind of glowing. But I don't know if that would be too much. I'm so torn on her hair, guys. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Her hair might be the very last thing we color, which is crazy because I think on almost, I'd say like a good 90% of the whimsy girls that I've colored, I think I almost always start with their hair. I'm usually not torn on it, but I think this looks awesome. I am at that point now where I'm so excited <laughs> to see this finished. Um, I feel like we've made some very good progress. I like the amount of work that we have done on the page. I'm still a little bit unsure color-wise of several things. So I think what we'll do is in part three, we will kind of finish coloring her, um, not counting her hair. We might tackle the vines, maybe some bushes or some mushrooms, depending on what I've kind of figured out. But yeah, we'll, we'll finish her for sure. And then we'll see what what I'm confident about color wise or what we have time for and then we'll kind of add what we can there but yeah I feel very very good about this so far I hope you guys are enjoying zoom out a little bit so we can see everything that we've colored just gorgeous if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. It kind of helps the YouTube algorithm get the video out there so more people who might enjoy this color along might see it. So it would be extremely helpful. Um, yeah, I think that's it for part two and I hope to see you guys in part three. All right guys, as always, take care and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!